Hey, it's Chris. Final Cut Pro is in the App Store for the iPad. You can actually go download it, check it out right now. And today, I wanna to give you some of my first impressions after I've been playing around with it for several days. It's kind of weird for me, bizarre actually, that I've been actually using Final Cut Pro on my iPad Pro, something I've been dreaming about for a long time, because as longtime subscribers know, I've been saying for years now that Final Cut Pro coming to the iPad was the last piece of the puzzle that would let me fully switch away from my Mac if I wanted to, which it turns out is not what I actually want to do. I enjoy having a Mac and an iPad both. And as part of this video, I'll be talking a little bit about why that is the case. But what's my overall impression now that Final Cut is here and you can bring your entire studio to your shoot? I think what I wanna say here is that I was expecting Final Cut for the iPad to actually be something like 75% of the Mac app version and be a little bit disappointed. But I think in reality, as I've used it, it's turning out to be more like 93 to 97% of what I expected it to be at launch. You know, I expected it to get better with time, but at launch, I think it's already around 95% of what I would need it to be, to be fully happy and satisfied with it, which is really saying something. You know, there's some serious benefits to Final Cut on the iPad, and you're always gonna have critics who immediately start pointing out everything that's wrong with something instead of focusing on all the things that are right with it. And so I have a feeling I'll end up being sort of the counterbalance to a lot of the negative stuff. But let me talk about the iPad angle, this all new creative interface as Apple builds it. There's really something great about being able to use an Apple Pencil with Final Cut Pro. You've got this hover ability so that you can preview footage that you scrub over. That's really cool. When I was thinking about Final Cut Pro coming to the iPad, I never really thought about how would that work with an Apple Pencil. So the Apple Pencil experience has actually ended up being really cool. I talked about this when this was announced, the news, but you feel closer to the stuff on the screen when you can hold the iPad and you almost feel like you're manipulating what's on the screen directly instead of just going through a keyboard and a mouse. It's a different experience. Like being able to pull up this jog wheel here, which obviously doesn't exist on the Mac version, totally new innovation here, and have frame specific you know, editing. That's great, it's really precise. I didn't know how that precision was gonna work on the iPad. So it's Final Cut, but it has its own iPad first personality and I see this as something I could really, really get used to. This live drawing feature, being able to use the Apple Pencil to come in and mark up the screen, whether it's words or animations. For somebody like me, that's gonna end up being kind of a breakthrough thing. That's not something that someone in Hollywood's gonna use. But the professional creator of today, where everyone's on social media to promote their business, for their school projects, you know, just whatever it is, content creators, to be able to get into your footage and actually personalize it and leave your mark with the Apple Pencil, that's gonna be something that I'm not gonna wanna live without now. And so what I'm trying to say is there's some features on here that when I go back to the Mac version, I'm gonna be missing. And that's something that I wasn't expecting. A lot of people were just expecting this to be a port of the Mac app, but here these iPad first features have hooked me. They've sucked me in. And one of the biggest features is obviously being able to disconnect your iPad and bring it with you somewhere without the keyboard if you want to do this really professional edit. Now, of course, Apple offers a few different editing options, don't they? There's clips for sort of your hobbyist type people, people just publishing stuff for friends and family. Then there's iMovie, which is a step up, which is, you know, if you want a little bit more control and some extra professionalism, then you can do that, but it's still very beginner friendly. And then you can graduate all the way up to Final Cut Pro and it has most of what you need, almost all that a quote unquote professional would need. Although I do wanna point out on the Final Cut for iPad website, under the send to Mac section, it's pretty telling. Export a project to Final Cut Pro for Mac to access features like advanced color grading, object tracking, and more. So there are some features that are built as advanced that you're only gonna get on the Mac, at least for now. So there's kind of this interesting balance. There's some iPad only features and there's some Mac only features. I'm really loving though, being able to ditch the keyboard, pack up just the iPad with a cover and you could go lounge on the couch or take it to the coffee shop with a lot less bulk. Great for the plane ride, I'm imagining, but then reconnect the keyboard if and when you want it. So really the iPad experience offers the best of both worlds. Touch first, sure, yes, but also keyboard if you want it. And there's times that you do want that. Like I'm used to editing at two times speed when I'm editing through like the talking A-roll stuff of these videos. So I'll hit Command L twice and it will play back 
at two times speed. And I can get a lot more done that way, which is something else to point out. There's a lot of features that I wanted from the get go baked right in that I'm not gonna have to wait for. Things like the limiter, things like effects and transitions, different background options even. You know, there's some soundtracks in here which have some pretty cool features. And one thing I'll say is this was pretty intuitive for me to pick up. It's the same, it's familiar, but it's also different. So there's some stuff that I needed to learn or figure out. And I was able to get in, know what I was after and dig around and actually figure it out pretty easily. It's pretty intuitive. Now you see at the bottom of the screen in this project that I was editing, I had three angles going. Oftentimes I'll have up to six angles, six cameras or a screen recording thrown in there too, but six angles that I need to switch between. So this is limited to four angles, which is very usable. I really very rarely need more than four angles. And you know what? Multicam angle sync worked better for me on the iPad version than on the Mac version. On the Mac version, I always have to manually sync up and line up my footage with the audio, and it very rarely works on its own when I try to do the clap thing and have it sync up. On the iPad, the syncing was instantaneous and perfect. One thing I can tell you that I'm definitely excited about here is that the next time Apple updates the camera specs on the iPad Pro, I'm really gonna be paying attention for the first time in basically forever because I'm real interested in being able to use this in like my studio setting to be able to shoot edit and publish potentially all on this one device without even having to mess with any external cameras and SD cards and stuff if you want to. And what's cool about that is that you can shoot ProRes. I love Apple's ProRes on their mobile devices. It looks so good. I mean, the iPhone ProRes footage is amazing and I wish I could use it more, but the big bottleneck for me has been exporting that, getting it off the iPhone, which you have to do through the cable onto the Mac. That's where I used to edit it before or even out of here. It's just a huge pain because the files are so enormous and the transfer speeds are so slow. But if you could just shoot the ProRes on the device and stick it right into your timeline, that basically cuts out that annoying bottleneck, potentially. Now, in order to import things, I was actually making use of this hyperdrive accessory, which I'll link up down in the description for you. And that made importing things from my SD cards, from my Sony cameras, very seamless. Uh, had no hiccups or issues there, and working with the Files app to manage my SD cards was great, no issues there at all. Now, one thing I'm excited about that's coming soon is third-party content, in other words, third-party plugins. So a lot of people rely on plugins from companies like Motion VFX to really add some life and extra features to their videos via plugins. So it would have been an absolute Achilles heel, I think, if Apple wasn't planning on letting third-party developers incorporate their plugins into the iPad version of the app because it wouldn't be truly pro. It wouldn't let the pros do the things that they need to do that they're used to doing on the Mac over on the iPad. You know, I feel like the scene removal mask, being able to easily cut a background out and replace it is a great way to showcase the power of the iPad. For a really long time, people were saying the iPad is overpowered for what you can actually use it for, for the apps that are available. And I think Final Cut's gonna be one of those use cases where people are gonna be like, okay, there's a good reason for this thing to have as much power as it does, to chop through all of this amazing footage that I've shot and do it smoothly, and then be able to add these great effects on the fly. By the way, as I was using this, it was very, very seamless. There weren't like hiccups. I wasn't waiting for stuff to load. It was very fast and it was super fluid. To have these features like auto crop, where it will auto crop your horizontal footage to be for a vertical format, that's gonna be key, obviously, moving forward. A lot of people have been complaining in the video editing space that Final Cut on the Mac was starting to fall behind and you know, DaVinci Resolve and Adobe's products were like pulling ahead in terms of releasing new features and it felt like Final Cut Pro to them was just stagnant. Well, I have a feeling that the Final Cut team was probably really focused on delivering this iPad experience. <laughs> and while they did that, they shipped some of these really cool features like scene removal mask and auto crop and voice isolation, et cetera. And some of that stuff's gonna make its way over to the Mac, I'm sure too. I am not complaining about what we actually ended up getting here. It's gonna do what I need it to do. So if you're somebody who wants to do YouTube videos like you see on my channel here, you'll be able to do that, no problem. Again, is a Hollywood studio going to be using the Apple Pencil to write on the screen and stuff? No, but this feels like it's really crafted for the modern person who wants to deliver something really well and professionally. There are some things that I haven't tried and probably won't try, things like being able to edit cinematic mode footage 
you know, after the fact, after you've shot it, change the different focus and blur points, you know, from your iPhone footage. If that worked better, I think that would be really cool. Maybe a, a few iPhones down the line, that's something I would actually use all the time. At the moment, that's not something I'm gonna be using. I know other creators are complaining about the color adjustment options. So yeah, you're gonna have to save that advanced color editing and correcting workflow for the Mac side of things. But that brings me back to the point that I brought up earlier, which I wanna talk a little bit about right now, which is I'm no longer of the opinion that I would rather have either the Mac or the iPad like maybe several years ago when I used to say things like if Final Cut would just come to the iPad, then I could switch away from the Mac. You know, things have changed in the Mac world. Apple really started taking the Mac seriously a, a few years ago and Macs are so amazing now and my Mac setup lets me do things and work in a way that I do prefer for certain situations with my big ultra wide monitor and screen, right? But the iPad also offers me some options that I don't wanna give up either. And it's not an either or situation. Now, I know that's not true for everybody. You know, and for every statement that I say, somebody out there is gonna take an opposite approach, right? I'm just saying for me, I like having both machines as options and using each to its strengths. So here's somebody who says, don't get too excited about Final Cut on the iPad. At $5 per month, I'm sure it's just gonna be a scaled back version, so just use LumaFusion instead. I understand that a lot of people are upset about the pricing. I addressed this in the last video when I said, for me, I'm gonna make a lot more money from my business being able to utilize this tool at $5 a month. I'm making a lot more than $5 a month when I'm editing these videos. Uh, so that's not something that really bothers me. I get subscription fatigue and everything, so we're all gonna differ, right? But that's my take on the subscription. Now that said, if there was a one-time payment option, would I do that over the subscription? You know, it'd be nice to have the option, but I'm not gonna cry over this one. Now, a lot of people are asking me about, can you use an external drive to edit off of? In other words, can you store footage on an external drive and not have to store it on your internal hard drive in order to edit it? like you can with LumaFusion? And the answer at the moment seems to be no. So you're gonna have to import stuff into your library so that you can edit it there. Now, the good news about that is, is it plays back super smoothly and fastly. It's a great experience when you do that. The bad news is, if that's the case, then you obviously are gonna have to upgrade your internal storage to really take advantage of this. All right, so those are my initial impressions. I'm really excited about this particular launch, something I've been waiting for for a long time, really unlocks a lot in terms of my own personal workflow and creativity with the Apple Pencil here. So I'm not disappointed. Uh, there's room for improvement, but I'm really excited about this first step here. Really excited. All right, don't forget to check out the course. Don't forget to check out the newsletter. And I'm not just saying that if you don't know about the newsletter and course, like go click on the links down there because they're useful. So check them out. I'll catch you in the next video. Later.